Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so in this video, we will be talking about what is happening across the Atlantic Basin. Are we going to be seeing any activity before this month officially ends? And then we will be focusing on the Eastern Pacific because a major hurricane, major hurricane Roslyn is an imminent threat to land and will be making landfall very, very soon. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update on the tropics. And to share support for the channel, you can leave a like on this video. Okay, so let us go ahead and talk about Roslyn for some time. And so here we have a satellite view of the major hurricane so this cyclone is rapidly intensifying it still has time before it makes its way inland and it currently has sustained winds of 120 miles per hour and uh, because it is moving slowly at the moment it is uh, it has even more time to really get itself together and so we have various areas that are under watches and warnings so going on to the cone forecast we're seeing that even though Rosalind is such a major hurricane it is a tiny cyclone but I think this is the definition of tiny but mighty because, I mean, it is uh, expected to make landfall as a destructive category for hurricane. And so many areas are going to be impacted by this. And so a hurricane warning that is in red, that is in effect for Playa Perula to El Roblito as well as Las Islas Marias. A hurricane watch that is in pink is in effect for north of El Roblito to Mazatlan. And there is a tropical storm warning that is in effect for south of Playa Perula to Manzanillo and then north of El Robrito to Mazatlan. So those areas are likely to experience uh, impacts from the cyclone. And so uh, we're seeing on the cone here where Ralston is likely going to be making landfall on Sunday. So it has the entire day today to intensify even more. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it manages to surpass what is currently expected. But that would be absolutely devastating. And so I hope that uh, persons along the Pacific coast that are under watches and warnings are taking this serious because this is a very, very destructive hurricane and uh, it is going to be bringing so many life threatening impacts in terms of all of the heavy rainfall, the life threatening destructive storm surge, as well as those catastrophic winds. And so, guys, uh, again, if you're in Mexico, I hope that all is going well in terms of preparations because this is a monster that is barreling towards the country. And so now let's go ahead and talk about what is happening across the North Atlantic Basin and if we're going to be possibly seeing any more tropical cyclones uh, as they're going to be heading into the end of October. And so we're currently taking a look at infrared satellites of the basin and we're seeing here that we have that activity associated with the cold front, well, which is now a stationary front, of course, and it is slowly dissipating. But there is still that chance that the very areas that are being affected uh, could still feel more impacts in terms of increased precipitation but as we head into the next several days there will be uh, that gradual decrease in all of that activity across sections of the northwestern Caribbean and uh, we see some activity out in other areas such as uh, just to the northeast of the Leeward Islands we're seeing all that activity that is in association with a tropical wave there and we also have another tropical wave that is being behind that one but there is actually an area of interest out in the Atlantic now and you might not even notice it but it is right within that region so that is invest 94L so let's take a closer look at it and see what is going on here. And so here we have the tiny rotating system. We barely see a lot of activity in association with it, but it is marked as a disturbance by the National Hurricane Center. And as we're seeing on the five-day outlook here, it is given a low 20% chance to possibly develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days. And so if it is likely that we're going to be seeing some development and the system is getting itself together, then 
then this chance will gradually increase as time goes by. But uh, it is going to be drifting towards the west and eventually the west northwest uh, as we're going to be heading into the uh, into next week. And so that is on the horizon for that system in terms of it being a threat to the U.S. None of that is solid, and uh, it might curve back out to sea and not really become anything uh, significant out there. If it manages to, uh, to acquire the tropical or subtropical characteristics and reaches the threshold of a storm, then it is going to be acquiring the name Lisa, as that is the next name to be used for this hurricane season. However, let's go ahead and talk about this map right here. So I believe I mentioned it in one of my previous videos. Uh, so this is the Global Tropics Hazards Outlook, and it's from the Climate Prediction Center. And, and looking at the map for week two, where we see from the 26th of October to the 1st of November, uh, we're taking a look at the Atlantic and we see that area highlighted in that a uh, red shade, that pale red shade, and that is indicating uh, a low probability of tropical cyclone development. So uh, that is quite interesting, and uh, only time will tell what's going to be happening, but models except for the GFS are not really expecting anything to be out there uh, in the Caribbean. And as I speak about the GFS, let's take a look at what the model is expecting. I wouldn't say it is 100% impossible, but uh, only time will tell. So this is for Monday the 31st of October, the last of the month, and the model is expecting that by that time, uh, we're going to be having that low pressure area making its way across the Windward Islands. And then headed to the uh, 2nd of November, here we're seeing some intensification, a pressure here of 974 millibars, uh, and we have the system in the Eastern Caribbean Sea. But as we head to November 4th, here we're seeing where GFS is expecting that this is going to be uh, a very destructive hurricane, a major hurricane with uh, a minimum pressure of 936 millibars and uh, making its way up to the Virgin Islands. And so this is quite interesting here, what the GFS is expecting, but taking this with a grain of salt because it doesn't have to take place. We, As I said, we don't really see other models hopping onto this and though GFS goes much further out, this wouldn't assure accuracy at all because weather changes constantly and uh, it is likely that we're going to be seeing a lot of changes with the future model run uh, in terms of this system. But of course, the hurricane season is not over yet and we definitely still have to keep our eyes out for systems across the Atlantic but as of now the only system that is out there to watch is 94L which might not even be a threat to land in the long term so only time will tell what's going to be happening but again we have that area highlighted across the Caribbean where we could possibly see some development in that region but that stands at a low chance right now and uh, again we have major hurricane Roslyn now expected to make landfall as a catastrophic category for hurricane as it is rapidly intensifying and we have the various areas of the pacific coast of mexico under watches and warnings as life-threatening conditions are expected from the cyclone and so that is really it for this update and i will keep you guys updated as time goes by so if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and of course remember to always be weatherwise.